getting the win here at home 119 to 107 against the 76ers down Tyrese Maxey uh, to be clear Warriors of course out Klay Thompson scratch with an illness Moses is still out Chris Paul uh, GP2 you know all the details right uh, big win here for the Warriors you know get them how you can right uh, kind of wish they were able to be a little bit more out ahead of this but with the way that they've been playing this season again like I said get them how you can and they held on to a game that very nearly fell apart again something that the Warriors have really struggled with is just closing out games uh, big lead or not so uh, they were able to hold on here just I'm I'm pretty happy with this performance really rocky first half uh but overall i'm pretty proud of it i, I really like the games from uh from draymond steph wiggins and kaminga i think they all played incredible and we'll get all in, we'll get into every single one of them here but uh, i do want to preface everything by saying you know hopefully joel Embiid's okay uh sort of midway through little late into the fourth quarter uh both Embiid and Kaminga dove on the floor to get a loose ball, and uh, Kaminga kind of landed on the inside of uh, Embiid's leg, uh, I think knee, and Embiid ended up leaving the game. So he walked out on his own, um, granted, you know, a little bit of help, but on his own still. So hopefully everything's good there. Um, hate seeing people get hurt in general, but, you know, yeah. Uh, let's get into uh, pretty much kind of the negatives so to speak of this game uh first off we'll start with the fact that warriors played nick nurse uh nick nurse is an absolute pain in the ass against the warriors um i swear this man just circles his team on the calendar uh because he has the most annoying game plan against them every single time uh, and it's just junk stuff on steph uh, and then just a lot of you know boxing ones full court pressing a lot of antagonistic stuff um, and you know, did it again tonight, kind of got the Warriors a little bit, some awkward zones they played that messed with the Warriors flow a little bit. And, uh, especially in that third quarter, but, uh, overall, I think the Warriors kind of held their, held their own here, you know, uh, again, down Tyrese Maxey, but it doesn't really matter. Um, this is the, you know, no one on this Warriors team, uh, I thought going into it could really hold their own against them beat, but uh, I think the Warriors did a great job on him. First half turnovers killed the Warriors. Absolutely killed the Warriors. Just a lot of mental lapses, errors. I, one of them in particular, Steph. I think on a, it was I think it was a missed shot, turned into a defensive rebound for Steph. Steph just turned and chucked it down court, but it went right to Embiid, who dribbled up and hit a pull up three in the span of like two, three, four seconds. Uh, just a five-point swing, really bad. A lot of stuff like that, just mental lapses, turn uh, travels, and you know, carry just all the normal warriors, you know, throwing the game for themselves moments. Um, another big issue, boxing out on the defensive glass. That was absolutely killer for the Warriors this game. They just couldn't do anything. I mean. Every rebound Philly was fighting harder for, getting into better positioning, which has been an issue the Warriors have had with the defensive rebounding. It's just they they get the first jump, which should be a good thing, but they're in such poor position for the rebound. It just doesn't make any sense. Like Trace, he just over he he jumps way too quickly. Like ball is still in the air, and that's when he makes his jump. And so he just misses like more rebound, way more rebounds that he could potentially be getting if his timing and positioning were better. Um, same goes for, uh, you know, Wiggins, Kaminga, uh, just struggling to time rebounding properly. Uh, something I, I, you know, you think Kavon Looney could help with as Kavon's been one of the better rebounders in this league the last couple seasons. But uh, that is an issue. Uh, giving up 13 offensive rebounds here to Philly rough don't like to see it especially because again uh if you've seen philly's roster especially when a beads off the floor they just don't have much height they don't have many wings uh i think right now uh i mean i don't know if kj martin's technically a small forward or a shooting guard but they've got Ubre, 
Tobias, and Korkmaz. Pretty much. I, I, and then, again, if you want to count KJ. Granted, KJ's got hops, so, it, you know, it is what it is. But they just, they're not a big team. Not a very big team. I think they also have Paul Reed, but whatever. Um, and the Warriors aren't a big team themselves, but I think the Warriors have, you know, three very capable rebounders, plus Trace, plus Kavon Looney, um, and really struggling there, especially boxing out. Third issue from this game, botched rotations off double teams. Boy, howdy. Have the Warriors been terrible at making the proper rotations uh, off of double teams? Um, I personally, I, I don't even know if I'm a big fan. I've ever been a big fan of double teaming because at the end of the day, you're just essentially lending a wide open kind of uh, step in two, three for anyone. And I don't really care what percentages say. That's just a comfortable shot. If you ever played basketball, whether you're good or bad, shots when you're just catching and going into your rhythm, they tend to feel really good, you know, a lot better than when you're having to create a little bit uh, or you're just someone's draped all over you and you don't really, you know, there's no comfortability there. Uh, the Warriors tend to, you know, they double team a lot and then they don't rotate or they rotate to the, the wrong guy. Uh, hence why Furkan Korkmaz had, I think, like 26 points or something like that tonight. Uh, made a crap load of threes because the Warriors, again, botching rotations, sending two to Jaden Springer, leaving Korkmaz wide open. Uh, kind of just a ridiculous thing, but that's one of the things I've talked about. Kaminga had some issues with that. Wiggins had a couple mistakes. Pajemski, um, just kind of an issue the Warriors have had all season, frankly, the last couple seasons, and no different tonight. Uh, positives. Big positives. The Warriors held MB to a season low tonight. Uh, held him to only where are we, 14 points on 5 of 18 shooting. Uh, again, season low for him. Draymond, big time uh, impact there. Uh, of course, Draymond starting at center here for the Warriors. So that was huge. You know, really, really did a good job on Embiid. Because if he was getting everything that he wanted, it was just going to be a rough night. Didn't really get to attack the glass much. And the biggest thing, uh, they held the free throw merchant of death to only two free throws. And neither of them were even shooting fouls. One was the defensive three second uh, and he took the free throw. And the other was off of a technical. So shooting wise and actual defense, zero free throw attempts for Joel Embiid. Absolutely massive. Uh, the world won. Uh, with that defensive performance against him. Again, I, I feel like I have to say this because basketball fans can be like this. I know MB got hurt. I addressed it at the beginning. I, of course, hope he's okay. I know he ended up getting injured. But, you know, critique on game is not me saying, like, I'm glad he got hurt. So let's not do that. I know a lot of people are quick to be like, oh, you got hurt. You know, why are you crit? Look, man, it happens. You know, it happens. Was I shitting all over Marcus Smart's game? Or, you know, when people were like, ah, oh, Steph didn't play too well when, you know, when Marcus Smart hit no, right? Um, no, a little bit of a mini rant, whatever. We're going to get past that. Uh, and overall, Warriors who have struggled massively with, you know, personal fouls and just really dumb, you know, excuse me fouls, ticky tack stuff, only held the, uh, held the uh, Philly, held Philly, the only 21 free throw attempts. Um, almost kept it under. There were a couple, excuse me, ones at the end, but the Warriors were up. Um, great job overall, though. Again, no Tyrese Maxey, so, you know, when that team's got Maxey, whole different landscape of how they play. Um, but holding them 21 uh, in general for this team, that's good. That's a good day. Good day at the office defensively. Um, players' stats. Number one, I'm still, this is like the third video where I, I, you know, he's at the top of my list. Draymond, another incredible game. Nine, six, and six for him. Uh, two made threes, two blocks. Again, played incredible defense on Joel Embiid. Uh, held him to a season low. Since coming back from suspension, man, Draymond has continued to show why he's still the second best player on this team. I know everyone's saying Kaminga. And that's perfectly fine to say. I think it's Draymond. I think it just drastically changes everything. Um, 
still need to make moves. I'm not not saying that, but uh, Draymond, when he's playing, things look different, man. They just do. And as his minutes continue to ramp up, we're going to see even more. Steve Kerr said before the game that this lineup with him at center, Kaminga at the four and Wiggins at the three, uh, is going to continue to be that way. You know, you stick him with that. And Kevon Ludi didn't play too much tonight. So for everybody who's been tired of seeing Kevon out there, a little bit of myself as well. There you go. Uh, Draymond's playing more at the five in particular. At the five in particular. Next, Steph. Big time heater. 37 points tonight. 12 of 17 shooting. 8 of 13 on threes. 8 rebounds, 7 assists, and your triple-double for him. Uh, and that's 30-plus in three straight games. Steph's been on one, man. Um, you know, I, I he gets on those moments where it's just like, uh, you know, he had a few, of, uh, a few of those shots tonight where it's like messes up his dribble, loses it kind of on the hip or whatever, and just picks it up and chucks it, and it, he's just feeling it, you know. Um, Steph's look good. The turnovers are still a bit of an issue. But uh, offensively, I think Steph's been playing the best basketball of the season. It's just, uh, you know, again, got to make sure the uh, the secondary scoring is consistent. Otherwise, uh, you know, Nick Nurse is one of the exceptions as far as like trying to make life for Steph as difficult as possible. Granted, Philly doesn't quite have the, uh, uh, the personnel to do that like they did in Toronto. But uh, Teams are just going to continue to double them, trap them, force everybody else to make plays. Um, so appreciate these big time scoring outputs from Steph when you can, especially with the efficiency that he's doing it at, because it's difficult, man. It's difficult when you get guarded the way he does. So um, big time output for him, 30 plus in three straight games. I think they said like 12 in a row of 25 plus or something like that. So Steph's really been on one. Uh, glad he's kind of getting back to form, or at least what we know uh, he can get to. And, uh, you know, for this road trip, going to need Steph to kind of carry the load still. Um, don't know how long Clay is going to be out with the illness. Don't know what it is. Could be, you know, just a one game thing. Could be a couple. So uh, it's pretty paramount that Steph continues to play uh, the best basketball he possibly can. Next, Jonathan Kaminga, man, you know. Talked about it multiple times. Uh, Kaminga has played great. Timeline, I don't know. Playoffs, is he going to continue to do this? I don't know. But I've been extremely impressed and happy with Jonathan's play, both offensively, uh, and he's looking well, he's looking better defensively. He still has the intensity and the effort, but um, again, we talked about the botched rotations off double teams, the lack of boxing out on the defensive glass, uh, there are still some issues where Kaminga needs to be a bit better, but uh, you know, overall, I can't complain. I think Jonathan's been absolutely great. Uh, 26 points tonight, which is, uh, I think like, uh, what was it? 17, 18 games in a row or whatever. I don't, something like that of, uh, double digits scoring. And then like, this is his fifth or sixth game of 20 plus in a row. Um, and the efficiency again, incredible 11 of 19 shooting also had seven boards love to see you're six eight you're one of the biggest athletes in the league get on the glass please three steals and a block and my favorite little little tidbit from jonathan coming of this game 39 minutes played only two personal fouls that's huge that's huge you know again point of attack defense is a very big issue for the warriors they really only have uh, JK and then Wiggins. So if Kaminga's racking up fouls or if Kaminga's getting baited into dumb stuff, uh, it really hurts this team because there's no one that can really pick up the slack. So uh, to only have two personal fouls when you're going up against Tobias Harris and you're going up against Embiid in some matchups, uh, you know, Kelly Oubre at, at, at points, that's pretty impressive. I'm really, uh, really happy with Jonathan's play of late. Uh, and tonight, no different. So great job there. Uh, and then last but not least, man, shout out to Andrew Wiggins. I have bashed him a ton this season. Deservedly so. Deservedly so. But he's been incredible in these last few games. Um, you know, I don't want to go too much into it, but uh, 
you know, Decky's passing seems like it was kind of the turning point for him. Uh, and again, don't want to assume with something as, you know, serious as that, but it really feels like, uh, and, you know, multiple people have talked about it, you know, kind of putting things back into perspective for Andrew Wiggins, because he just looks like he's, he's been shot out of a cannon uh, in these last three games. Uh, the effort and the intensity are there, you know. I've been someone who at first was, you know, last season, I was like, I don't really want to question someone's love for the game. I think that's a little bit of a low blow. Um, but as far as this season went, I really did. I was like, man, he doesn't look like he wants to be there. Uh, and I don't think I was the only one with that sentiment. Um, but the last few games, man, the effort and intensity on both ends has been off the charts for him. Again, feels like he's been shot out of a cannon. Uh, dunking a ton. That was one of my biggest complaints. It seems stupid. It's like, well, if he's going up, he's going up. Who cares if it's a dunk or not? The dunk is like the anger. That's the emotion. And, you know, the I want to yam on you because I'm pissed. You know, we're losing. I want to help this team win. Energy, right? Uh, Andrew's been dunking a ton. And it's just awesome to see. I get so hyped. Uh, just a simple little two hand dunk because it, you know, is good as he is as a finisher which honestly not that good uh that dude's a supreme athlete and he needs to be he needs to be leaping and so to see him really start to get his legs back and and start dunking more it's awesome it's awesome and it looks like he's he, he's having a lot more fun out there of course again the effort and intensity extends to both ends of the floor his defense has been amazing just causing havoc you know uh, I, I'm again, very, very happy with his effort on that end. And he's really making an impact for the Warriors. And, uh, I talked about it in, uh, in the, was it in the podcast or one of the videos recently that if Jonathan, you know, as great as Jonathan's been, if Andrew Wiggins gets back to that elite defensive level, uh, you know, and depending on potential trades with Chris Paul, or at, at this point, I've seen a couple things from Shams of even clay, uh, or not Shams, excuse me, Anthony Slater, that they're open to trading clay. Depending on who they bring in, Kaminga, you, you know, might have to go to the bench because Andrew Wiggins' defense has been so elite uh, in, the, in these last few, and we know how elite his defense is on the stage of the playoffs, the finals. So, uh, you know, the way he's been playing on that end, really promising, um, and I'm very happy with that tonight. 23 points, 8 of 10 shooting, 6 of 6 from the free throw line. Uh, that's also been a huge thing. In general, Andrew Wiggins has never been much of a free thrower, but um, this, you know, few game stretch that he's had, really good in that front. And, you know, that's big because that, you know, when you're good at making free throws, that's more confidence at the rim, right? That's uh, I'm willing to take contact. I'm willing to go up because I can make my free throws. So 6 of 6 tonight, huge. Five boards, again, get on the glass, man. Supreme athlete, he's doing that. Four assists, his playmaking, back. You know, that was something that Andrew Wiggins started to develop in 2022. It's like, whoa, okay. He's starting to make some good reads as well. Uh, so he brought that back, looking great on that front. And then three steals and a block, same with Jonathan Kaminga. Those two have just been playing fantastic basketball as of late. Uh, and it's great to see, you know, unfortunately, the, the wins are still kind of hard to come by because the, the depth on this team is just really awkward and uh, they're deep in places that they don't really need to be in there, very shallow in places that they desperately need help in. So um, unfortunately, hasn't translated to too many, too many wins, but their individual play and team impact has been uh, incredible over these last few games. So I'm very excited uh, very happy and, you know, don't have many complaints. Again, uh, only issues from this game, first half turnovers. When are they not an issue for the Warriors? Boxing out on defensive glass. That's a symptom of not having enough wings that can really leap and not having a legit center. Uh, and then boxed, uh, botched rotations. That just, that's defensive IQ. That's getting as many, you know, defensive minded guys out there as you can. Um, and, and overall just defending on a string, which when the Warriors do that, they are capable of going to the finals. And we've seen that multiple times. So um, satisfied with this win again, Warriors win 119 to 107. Now they get on a, a little bit of a road trip before they get into the all-star break here. 
I think they're starting off with Memphis. They also play Philly again, potentially with Tyrese Maxey back, and hopefully Joel Embiid's healthy uh, for his sake as far as the MVP goes, but also just you want to see guys healthy. So, yeah, man. If you guys like the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know your thoughts about the game. Uh, all that good stuff. Thoughts on Kaminga, Wiggins. Should the Warriors even make a trade? Do you think if they're healthy, they can compete? Let me know. Uh, yeah. You guys have a good rest of your day. I will see you all in the next podcast episode, which will likely be uploaded uh, at some point this week. But uh, more videos to come, of course. Anyways, peace.